thank you sir yeah i'll uh, ask chinmay to coordinate today's session yeah chinmay please yes sir thank you sir a very good morning to all so uh, Hello, sir. sorry to interrupt are we ready to go live oh ah uh, yeah yeah so you, you you tell us and then we'll start yes so we are going live in 5 4 3 2 1 we are live uh thank you a uh, very good morning all so today in uh, today's fellow mo teaching module uh, we are discussing about femoral neck fracture so these though these are the rare fracture but there are a lot of controversies regarding the timing the reduction the implant of choice to treat this patient so uh, to have a, a be better and a broader look on this fracture we asked dr vidya sagar who have a um, n number of publication of femoral neck fracture so uh, i think he is a perfect uh, person to talk about this fracture pattern and to teach the every fellow about uh, how this fracture pattern behave under different circumstances and what are the different ways and modalities to treat this uh, fracture over to you dr vidya sagar thank you yeah thank you chinmay i'll start sharing my screen so meanwhile uh, dr vidya sagar is uh... a dear friend and a pediatric orthopedic surgeon from hyderabad and uh, i saw his publications and about 80% of his publications are based on neck femur fracture he is uh, carrying one of the largest series of uh, acute femoral neck fractures in children in our country uh, so yeah vidya stage is all yours yeah. hmm? sir can you all see my screen that Yes, we can see your slides. Yeah, so I'll be talking only about uh, acute uh, femoral neck fractures and uh, not talk about uh, neglected ones. Uh, we all know it's a very rare fracture. In fact, uh, once it was uh, called so rare that uh, they told the orthopedic surgeon would see only once in a lifetime. But with high rising buildings and probably increased motor vehicle accidents, the incidence has been on rise, and now we are regularly seeing these cases. and in a country like india late presentation is also not uncommon and uh, why this fractures we are discussing here today is uh, because of the uh, number of complications it can have uh, compared to the other fractures and i'll discuss uh, each one the fracture types and the complications uh, later so what makes this fracture unique we have a similar fracture uh, neck fracture in the older age group what's important here is the precarious blood supply during this uh, childhood where only single vessel supplies the uh, femoral head and then most of the injuries unlike the older uh, counterparts are high velocity not like simple trivial trauma unless it's a pathological fracture and we have to consider the presence of a growing physis which may lead to premature arrest or deformity or iatrogenic injury because of our implants and then there is no option like arthroplasty and like the adult counter uh, parts so basically this is the most devastating complication avn which i have shown the type 1 2 and 3 rat lift types so this we don't want to have and most of the things might not be in our control but at least we should try to do a good job uh, in the things which are in the surgeon's control and this non union is another factor Uh, which uh, most of the people believe that it's under surgeon control and then coxa vara is one of the other complications other than that there is uh, mal union and there is uh, delayed union as well as uh, chondrolysis but they are again very rare these are the common complications which should be kept in mind and this is another example of a delayed union which united after almost 2 years uh, just because of the uh, improper reduction and compression during the initial procedure so our goals of treatment would be to achieve a timely fracture union and to get a painless hip with good range of motion and prevent complications uh, those which can be at least controlled to some extent we must be aware that uh, there are pathological fractures and uh, we should look for bone quality any other changes look for the mechanism of injury to at least uh, find out whether we are dealing with a pathological fracture or a real traumatic uh, fracture and it would need uh, obviously higher investigations like um, mri and sometimes ct scan so
So the popular classification and what I commonly used uh, use is a Delbit classification, which is based on the fracture level. And uh, usually it's classified as a transficial, trans cervical, basic cervical, and then for trochanteric. And I've shown down in, as we go from proximal to distal, the avian rates come down drastically. So that means the proximal, the injury, the chances of complication uh, like avian would be very, very common. And another AO classification is there, which uh, basically considers uh, pertrochantric as an extra capsular and doesn't take into consideration. However, what is important here also, I would like to add is uh, the Delbit has its own disadvantages. Like it's uh, more of anatomical description. Of course, it correlates with the prognosis uh, uh, sometimes. But uh, it uh, will not be the only one to consider when we are uh, thinking of fixing the fracture. So Powell's uh, angle, the fracture line orientation is very key, important thing which we must include in Delbit and uh, when we are considering management so that we don't miss the high Powell's angle and then uh, have further complications like coxavara, non-union and implant failures. So uh, there are some factors which are in our control and there are some factors which are not in our control. Coming to factors which are in our control, that's timing of surgery if they present early and then fixation methods, reduction techniques, and then achieving good compression as well as the joint decompression during surgery. Of course, age, when they present to us, the fracture type, mechanism, amount of displacement, these are all not in our control. So we will not talk about that. And uh, when we are really coming to clinical practice, I think these are the factors which we should consider. Most importantly, the age, because according to the age, the neck diameter, everything changes. And then the fracture type, that means uh, fracture personality per se, the pattern, the combination, everything. And then amount of displacement, combination, and then lastly, the Powell's angle should be considered. So on physical examination, we must because they are usually high velocity injury, we must evaluate the children as a whole and include other systems as well to rule out polytrauma and uh, any other uh, injury to the visceral organs like lung and uh, the abdomen. Physically coming to local examination, generally they are unable to bear weight and there is a short and external rotated limb. There is hip tenderness when you try to palpate. However, in mildly delayed cases, don't be uh, deceived if you find a child who comes walking to your OPD, who had an injury about 15 days back, this is a about three to four year old child who had injury 15 days back and he's walking, but he's limping. And uh, if we take just one view, probably we'll miss out on the fracture. And then if we take the other view, I think uh, things will be more clear. You can see on the left side, there is a Salter Harris type uh, one. Actually, interop we found it to be a mild type two rather than one. And uh, uh, you must take these both views to come to a conclusion. And if you are still not confirmed in very younger kids, ultrasound would help in the little older ones. Probably MRI also will help in your uh, diagnosis. Uh, just a minute, I think my slides are stuck. Yeah. So what do we need to treat such fractures? Younger kids, I do it on the radiolysis table and the older ones uh, require uh, uh, traction table. I don't have a pediatric traction table currently. And we need a CM to properly place our wires and uh, fixation uh, devices. And then we need a hip spiker table to mobilize the younger kids and we need the proper instrumentation uh, to achieve the reduction and stabilize it. So first we'll talk about Delbit type one fractures. In my practice, I've seen it commonly in less than five years and 28% uh, is a recent uh, meta-analysis uh, prediction of avian, but 38 to 50 is the range. And generally, the fixation is through smooth pins. And uh, people commonly ask, well, what's the difference between SCFE and this type 1 injury? SCFE is uh, common in the older kids, especially the adolescents. 
and the mechanism is quite trivial in most of the cases. However, uh, there is no real differentiation between either um, uh, when the patient presents to you clinically. So this is a four-year-old boy who had a slip and fall from height and then he was unable to walk and uh, he had pain on the right hip. Uh, we see the x-ray, there is a physial separation and then uh, same thing is confirmed by widening and the angulation of the head and then tilting. Then commonly I use the technique in the younger kids is lead butter technique. That's uh, traction inflection at the hip and then followed by abduction uh, and then extension with internal rotation to bring the unlock the hip first, the fracture site, and then lock it back into position. And in the older kids, I use the white side method. That's the traction in extension. And generally, it's done on a traction table itself. Uh, there is a flint technique also, which is described in adults. Uh, but uh, only in one case, I had to use it. Flint's technique is nothing but uh, with the same maneuver like a lead better, you put a traction in the proximal thigh along the uh, neck of the femur so as to distract the site and disengage them. And it's mainly based on the spiral fibers, uh, which uh, lead to stability later on. So the same child underwent close reduction and uh, fixation. I put uh, three K wires and spaced them apart. And uh, you can see the position pre-reduction and post-reduction. And that's the dial test, which I'm doing just to see how much external rotation is there and whether I'm okay with the compared with the other hip. So you uh, compare the external rotation on uh, when the heels are resting uh, on your palm on each side and then decide whether it was uh, over or under or uh, good reduction. So this is the same child. I always back it up with spica whenever the children are less than eight years uh, because generally after that they don't tolerate well and we need some other immobilization device. And uh, then this is the same thing after four weeks and because they were inserted uh, percutaneously and they were all outside the skin, I removed them and then this is follow up at six weeks and that's at four years. The hip had excellent range of motion despite the coxa magna and we don't know rather really whether this is a fracture uh, result or it's a result of a subtle avian which has result caused this coxa magna. However, currently there is no physical bar there which uh, uh, to be seen on the x-rays. But there is some coxa breva as seen by the neck uh, height. And uh, coming to delbit type 2 fractures, which have a, a vascular necrosis rate of about 28% uh, uh, according to one series. Most common modality of fixation is CC screws, but we'll see the other things also. Generally, there is uh, always an argument whether you want a perfect reduction or something else is acceptable. But we always aim for the perfect reduction, but may not be possible in many cases because of the uh, fracture uh, combination and the pattern itself. So I think generally this dictum like the five degree of angulation and two mm translation would be okay for these higher fractures. And this is a 12 year old female who had a fall from height and we can see there is a displaced fracture on neck of femur. In AP view, you might not be able to know the true orientation. So you might need other views to know the actual level of the fracture sometimes. And this is in traction. Uh, now we know it's a transcervical fracture, almost in the middle third of the neck. And there is mild valgus at the fracture site. What we did was no matter what I did, it did uh, just uh, didn't go into uh, the anatomical reduction position. So we can see that uh, there is some valgus impaction there because of which we are not able to get a very perfect reduction. So I put this uh, Steinman pin uh, from the lateral side protecting lateral to the femoral nerve and then insert it via the prensor, uh, the fascia, deep fascia and the capsule and just manipulated and uh, held the proximal uh, fragment with that uh, same thing, just using a joystick. And then I pass my medial calcar pin, uh, which you can see in the last X-ray and uh, Open reduction, not the option all the time. You can try this percutaneous technique. You should not cause more harm than what is already there. And then uh, that is after the two pin stabilization. And then I put the further uh, pin a little bit higher than that. 
first i put was the medial pin so that we get adequate compression and the medial carcar gets a continuity and then i put the proximal pins next and we can see in ap and lateral the reduction is uh, quite acceptable and the same fracture healed in 6 weeks time and then that is 12 weeks and this is 24 weeks after the injury now Till one year, the child was fine. Then after two and a half years, the child came with hip pain and mild limp. And then what we noticed is there was some sclerotic area with a cystic change here in the x-ray. I didn't know whether it's a confounding factor with the previous fixation or what. Then we got an MRI and there was some changes which suggested that there was a medial subtle avian. And then uh, we, generally, we notice avian in the first year of uh, the fracture fixation, but here we can see after 2.5 years also we have this presentation. So I would recommend a little bit longer follow-up at least till three to five years probably to detect such cases. And then what I did was I injected local bisphosphonate through this uh, 18G spinal needles there. And then uh, that's after one year of the procedure, the child was uh, pain-free, absolutely asymptomatic. Lucky thing is this was a medial avian, and uh, which is most of the times non-bed bearing, uh, and it didn't uh, collapse much. So that was one good thing which happened. And this <clears throat> is the positioning what we do on the fracture uh, table. And generally pin placement, uh, they say, you put the medial calcar pin first and then posterior and followed by anterior superior pin. And uh, this is first, second, and third in that order. But uh, I would uh, uh, give a word of caution here because based on the fracture pattern, all fracture pattern is not same. So you must decide which one you are going to compress first. And uh, we'll look at few examples here. Then, nine-year-old female having a delbit type two fracture. AP shows a simple fracture, but there are two lines. If you see carefully. And on the lateral view, if you see the fracture line is quite oblique, going from proximal anterior to distal posterior. So that's a pattern which can cause shear when you're compressing. So be careful about that. And then um, what I do is generally fix up uh, with uh, three K wires. And uh, then with the K wires in C2, I think the position, uh, the chances of shear are less. Then I put the anterior screw and left the posterior screw didn't put the posterior screw deliberately because there was not much space in the lateral cortex and that's why that k wire is there and you can see the needle in the joint that's for aspiration post the procedure uh, which i routinely do and that fracture similarly if you try to compress without uh, putting adequate uh, fixation before it can just kink the posterior vessels because of the shear so that must be kept in mind it is a mechanism i've just tried to demonstrate here then this is a 16 year old male who had fall from height and this fracture pattern is again delbit type 2 and if you see this fracture they, it had a good reduction neck shaft angle wise but the rotation component was there and in the lateral view you can see there was a step off no matter what i did and then i used the joystick method to reduce that thing and push the thigh little proximally so you can see the lateral cortex is aligning well within the acceptable parameters and then we did the fixation with uh, the 3cc screws and uh, why the problems happened is unfortunately this was an automated table and it started tilting in the middle of the ot when we were just starting so we didn't have any other option so i had to do and compromise and that's the reason we had some difficulties you can see that aspiration and you can see the percutaneous and uh, uh, the screw uh, entry holes there and that's the reduction this is after uh, one year we can see some cam anteriorly but uh, this child had almost 20 degree of uh, flexion internal rotation and clinically uh, there is a normal gait full range of motion would fall into the excellent score of the hip and uh, is still under follow this is another case uh, a slightly distal delbit type 2 and uh, this was managed with uh, closed reduction elsewhere. And uh, we can see the reduction is not perfect. Some rotation is there and hardly there is any compression. So these screws are acting like an internal decorator at the best, uh, I would say. And ultimately, this is bound to fail. 
so the message here is after getting a good reduction holding it in position and stabilizing it also very important especially with compression that's when the fracture site gets better stability and that need not depend mainly on the implant to stabilize it so keep that in mind and when coming to open reduction or closed reduction i had to open only two fractures and most of my fractures were closely managed but uh, as uh, uh, mentioned in this paper by song at all i think the uh, debate is no more whether you do open or close the idea is to get a good reduction without causing iatrogenic injury to the head and uh, whatever the quality of reduction is most important that's the message i wanted to give and multiple attempts at close reduction is not good and may further injure the already uh, precarious uh, vascularity at the femoral head and we know all the complications avian coxavara non ulnar are much less in a well anatomically reduced hip rather than a non anatomical reduction so generally i prefer the modified uh, andre smith peterson approach for the proximal fractures that is there'll be type 1 and 2 but for the distal ones probably a lateral approach would be like watson and jones would be much better and that's the incision this is borrowed from the eo site and that's when you expose it go and do the anterior capsulotomy and then you find the fracture line and you can get the reduction and then fix it with whatever implant you want again there is a debate whether to cross the physis or not especially when it comes to delbit type 2 because in this i have tried to show here two fractures one is a high delbit and one is a low delbit now in a low delbit we can get good fixation without crossing the fracture site probably in this manner whereas in a high delbit if you try to avoid the physis i think it will not get compression and it will probably be inadequate fixation because of the shorter segment in the proximal site so what do we do in such cases uh, stability is uh, more important than not crossing the physis so we cross the physis and if the child is too young you can do it with smooth pin smooth wires uh especially the threaded ones but remember when we are crossing the physis the way to minimize the damage is not to do multiple attempts and probably if possible use a smooth pin in uh, most of the children who are near skeletal maturity probably above 10 i would not hesitate to cross the physis in any cases so again same uh, we are showing here not enough uh, compression uh, which should not have been done that's why it's gotten coxavara and word of caution here this is a 5 year old child who was managed with a uh, uh, cc screw fixation and now this is a, a ratliff type 3 uh, avascular necrosis where from the physis to the neck that the fracture site undergoes avascular necrosis we can see the cyst there also and then this child uh, after fixation couple of months later had a secondary scfe and usually irritation of the implant and uh, a uh, stable fixation distal and a weak physis proximal this theory contributes to the slip and so nowadays i have uh, started transfixing the physis with a smooth pin and i'll show you the example also what happens basically here is the pink one is a rigid fixation now and the the orange one is the physis and we see the weak link which is a physis which uh, starts to slip and we should be careful when we are fixing the younger kids with uh, such fractures and monitor them for scfe this is a 12 year old boy again had a fracture because of rta and then we did uh, close reduction and pinning and uh, that's 12 months post op now coming to delbit type 3 fractures uh, which have a vascular necrosis rate of 8 to 18% generally i choose a longer fixation device not just cc screws because most of the times i think they are vertically oriented fractures so if possible if there is a device which can lock it in place would be the best and when i am using dhs i use a de rotation screw otherwise i use a locking compression plate uh, the idea is to get the anatomical reduction first and then do the compression before fixation with a locking plate this is a 5 year old boy who had a same delbit type 3 fracture hi and then i put my antiversion pin first after reduction this was done on a radiolucent table where my assistant was holding the leg with traction and then uh, we put a pilot uh, uh, 
um, guide wire first and then um, I get the compression before that and then put my locking screws later. And this is same after fixation and that's one month post-op. Fracture has already healed in a younger child. And uh, I, again, I want to show this rigid fixation and there could be a chance of a CFD secondary. So we must keep an eye out. And this is the same fracture six months after implant removal. And this is one month after primary surgery. 15 year old boy who had a similar fracture, but you can see here there is a cyst there and it's a pathological fracture. And uh, my, this was very early on I did. So my mistake here uh, was to put, uh, I did an open reduction, grafted it nicely. And then after a fixation, put autologous bone graft. But what we tend to forget here is generally these are compression screws. And over a period of time, if the fracture site with comminution and collapses, then you're going to get a coxa breva. And that's what happened in this case. But luckily, this fracture united and in six months. And this is after two years of follow-up. The child hardly has any limp, but uh, probably extreme abduction was limited in his case. So in such cases, locking screw or a DHS with... Uh, uh, another derotation screw would help, but there is no ideal fixation in such cases. So we must choose our own implant and have everything ready and be prepared, uh, counsel the patient accordingly to the future complications, what's expected. So this is a study from my Austria where they fixed all the 22 children with uh, type two fracture and type three fractures with screws. Who they noted about uh, loss of reduction in about half of their cases, which was quite alarming when I read this paper. Uh, but um, there uh, were some deficiencies. That means uh, they used it in Delbit type 2 as well as type 3 fractures. And even in vertically oriented high Powell's angle also, they used the similar device, which may not be ideal. And then they didn't also mention uh, what was the immobilization period uh, for these fractures just to prevent uh, uh, for the displacement while the fracture heals. So these were the drawbacks of this study. And that's when I decided to include the Paul's angle in the Delbit classification. Coming to Delbit type 4, even rate is about 5 to 10%. And most of the time, fixation is through DHS or a locking compression plate. Where else I'll show the other things also and why I chose that also I'll mention here. So this is a 13-year-old boy who had a pearl trochanteric fracture. And then we can know, we can see it's higher than the lesser trochanter, whereas it's uh, below the great trochanter here. And then there are two methods. One is to fix it up uh, with, uh, this is a lateral plate, uh, which I used here. And uh, then this is a, I, I don't remember what model it was. Probably it was some plate which included the GT fixation. And uh, probably it could be a synthesis plate, I think. And then I could get two screws in the proximal site. And whereas the other case example is of a DHS with a derotation screw. Uh, this is an older kid. However, we get same fracture pattern. Three-year-old boy with wall from height and a, 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 sorry, a right hip pain. If you see here, uh, on the initial x-rays, it may look as if it is completely subtrochantric uh, pattern. But uh, I will show you further. If you see the lateral x-rays, it is extending quite high up to the anterior neck. And uh, that's what. When you are confused with the classification, simple thing is the proximal most extent of the fracture will dictate the delbit type. Remember that. And here, uh, what we did is uh, I uh, actually put a, a lag screw uh, through posterior uh, side to get the compression distally and then put three smooth pins. Uh, uh, so because this is a complicated fracture pattern, DHS won't be ideal because it just goes, the screw just go through the fracture site and whatever plate you're going to put laterally, compression plate also, probably your proximal two, three screws are going to, through the fracture site, which won't be ideal. So I chose this pattern because he's a younger boy. And uh, same thing, uh, I backed it up with a spica and that is because all the pins are outside, I removed at around four to six weeks. And then that's uh, after... Uh, six weeks time and same fracture in a three-year-old boy. I managed it with uh, CC, uh, this uh, smooth pins fixation. I tried sparing the physis. I have deliberately taken a smaller wire and transfixed the physis 
to avoid the secondary SCFE which can, we can have. And that's the pin which you can see. And that's done in a single attempt. And I've tried to show the stability also in this video uh, because uh, many people may say it's not stable and that's a poor choice, but you can see here. So again, uh, with a spica and that's after a year after healing and we can see there is no physial bar there because that pin which I put, I removed it at around uh, same time I removed the other pins four to six weeks time. And coming to undisplaced fracture, fix it or leave it, this uh, study by Bali et al, uh, which was managed uh, undisplaced fracture where they were managed, almost half of the undisplaced fracture got displaced. So word of caution, whenever you are treating a truly undisplaced fracture, monitor them weekly. And if you are in doubt, anyway, you're going to put a spica, there is no harm putting a, uh, a fixation just in C2, just to avoid that uh, displacement. All the uh, complications happen due to displacement, the AV and the coxa, where uh, the delayed union. So let's not uh, give a small leeway also for this uh, thing, which is really surgeon controlled. And coming to early or late fixation, uh, this uh, meta-analysis showed that there was a higher avian rate uh, in uh, late fixation. But we had gone through papers uh, which uh, showed uh, late fixation. Really, there is uh, no evidence in literature to say that uh, uh, there is a real difference because there are no randomized control trial. And because of the incidence and less number there, such studies cannot happen. So probably... When the case comes to us, we should be ready to fix it early and not like urgent night fixation, but definitely early in the morning. And the delay should not be from our side. That's the message I would like to give here. And then all the cases, I don't decompress at the end. Uh, I don't decompress at the beginning, but at the end of my fixation so that whatever bleeding happens during undrilling and fixation also is taken care. And there is no further... Uh, uh, compression uh, to the vessels because of the tamponade effect. So it hardly takes five minutes extra and then it's easy to do. So you should not hesitate to do it. So take home message is early anatomical reduction and stable rigid fixation is the key. And then decompress the joint, immobilize it, uh, whatever means non wet bearing or spica in the younger kids is okay. And follow up them adequately. And uh, of course your first attempt should be the best attempt. Don't uh, go for the second one so do it the job uh, properly in the first time. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. That was an excellent talk. And we get uh, we get to know about all the fracture pattern from type 1 to type 4. So there are some questions if you would like to answer it. So Dr. Sure. Modis uh, is asked, how the avian in neck femur different than parthis? Does avian natural course different in young and adolescent? Yeah, so what happens is uh, definitely Perthes is a idiopathic condition where the vascular necrosis happens, but it's self-limiting. The vascularity comes back. So, But that's not the case in uh, uh, fracture neck of femur in children. The younger children may do better because of the remodeling capacity, but the older children, adolescents, especially with avian, almost behave like adults. Whereas the avian in the younger kids may do better all and may behave like Perthes, I would say. Okay. So there is one more question from my Wait, side. Uh, Maulin, sir, do you have anything to comment on that? Yeah. So uh, why I ask that question is this sometimes, you know, with this type 1 Delbe or those AVNs, they also revascularize. Now, I have a couple of patients yes. with Delbe type 1 young children. And after fixation, they, they had uh, AVN. But gradually, it starts revascularizing from the sides. So we keep them non-weight bearing for a pretty long time. But they can revascularize completely. So some of them, they behave like, uh, not exactly like Percy's, but they undergo an acute uh, stoppage of blood supply and then it revascularizes. So that can happen and they don't collapse. Uh, that's what I've seen. So they... Uh, they do not, that's a central uh, piece of AVN and they, they don't call it. So I've shared those cases with Prasad also. So if we uh, inject bisphosphonate in that, then we'll give credit to bisphosphonate. 
but uh, in natural course also they may not collapse I, i'll share one case with you later yes uh, thank you sir uh, sir there is one more question from dr deepak uh, he was asking when you mobilize after cc screw fixation and what is your duration for the hip spiker Yes, Vidya, are you there? Sorry, can you hear me now? Yes, sir, yes. yes sir. Yeah. Sorry, I got it muted somehow. No, uh, uh, immobilization for all the patients would be for uh, six weeks minimum in Spica, the younger ones. The adults or the adolescents who can be trusted with uh, compliance, probably I'll put them on non-wet bearing for minimum six weeks and from there on, Clinical and radiologically will assess with serial uh, monthly x-rays. Whenever I find that uh, the callus, uh, not exactly callus, when the healing is good and I can confidently wait there, probably that time would be around two months, I believe. And most of our patients have started weight bearing at three months. Uh, so there is a one more question from my side. Uh, how will you immobilize the patient who is young, older than 10 years old? Do you give any slab, above knee slab or something like that? Yeah, so I don't give up on your slab. What I do is, uh, uh, generally they listen when you say non-wet bearing, but they may have range of motion. So I put a knee extension brace and uh, keep them like that for about six weeks. Only now and then supervise the uh, exercises out of the brace is allowed. Otherwise, the brace is to be there for about uh, six weeks. Okay, so there are no more questions. And another thing is, if I'm putting a locking screw, I'm more confident than I don't uh, locking plate. When I use a locking uh, compression plate, I don't immobilize them. It doesn't need immobilization. The fixation is good enough. If they do just non-wet bearing, that should take care. Okay, sir. So now we uh, move away with a case presentation, sir. The first case is by me only. Is it my screen is visible, sir? Yeah, yeah, we can see your screen. Yes, sir. Good morning, all. Uh, my name is Dr. Chinmay. I'm a pediatric orthopedic surgeon from Amrauti. So today I'm talking about the femur neck fracture uh, and the uh, importance of fracture anatomy. So a 12 years old boy uh, had a history of fall five days back and was presented to at, uh, at in a, the initial treatment was done at another center. The pain was uh, located to the hip region and uh, which was progressive in nature. So initial treatment in the form of x-ray and some medication and traction was given and they were advised to get uh, surgically operated for this fracture. But patient was reluctant to do uh, operative work over there. So they come over to a higher center at a district place. Uh, after five days, due to some logistic issue in their family. So there are no other bony injuries present. So these are the initial x-ray with which uh, the patient's family come to me and we can see there is a we can clearly classify it as a delbit type 2 fracture uh, in ap we can say there is a tele, uh, there is a uh, telescoping of uh, proximal and a distal fragment and in the lateral view there is the apex anterior uh, fracture deformity uh, of the proximal fragment so before going into the or i have some basic question in my mind what will be the anatomical reduction and how should i achieve this what will be the acceptable criteria? Intraoperative risk should I can stop and go for the fixation? What will be the approach if the close reduction is not getting and uh, my joystick attempts are not good enough to hold the reduction? Is it anterior or the lateral? And what will be the implant choice for these fractures? So these are the this is the base, um, beautiful paper which was published in JPOB 2016, which talks about the quality of reduction that is anatomical, acceptable and unacceptable reduction according to 2 millimeter and angular deformity in 20 degree in AP and lateral views. So I take the patient as it is a 12 years old child. Uh, I take him on a traction table and after reduction maneuver, these are the uh, fracture anatomy I got. These are the AP and a lateral view of the fracture. We can see, clearly say there is a telescoping of the fracture's fragment in a lateral view. So, but uh, when, when I look closely to the fracture anatomy, it is more like a vertically oriented fracture line which is, sir, as rightly said in his lecture that uh, not only a Delbe classification, but the Powell classification is also important when you fix this fracture. So it is going more towards the vertical line orientation. 
So uh, for getting the factor line orientation, uh, so I draw draw some lines to get how much of the angle uh, it is going into. So it is more coming towards the 78 to 80 degrees uh, of the angulation. So what I plan before it is what to place the three CC screw, uh, three inverted CC screw to fix this fragment. But as the fracture is a vertically oriented, I had to change and think about uh, any different plan to fix this child. So, because what happened in a horizontal fracture line, when we uh, put the uh, put the compression screw, it will start compressing at the fracture side. But at a vertically oriented fracture line, if we put the two, uh, if we put the three screws, it will cause distracted due to the shear force acting on the uh, fracture side. So, what I found a paper that uh, suggests that if you put a transverse screw along the fracture line, it will not cause the uh, collapse of that fragment, uh, achieve the bony union. Uh, you know, there is a no uh, collapse and there is a no shortening of the femoral neck, which eventually heal, uh, help in uh, healing the fracture fragment. So these are this is the paper which was published in injury 2017, which talks about the transfer screw fixation, which was placed in between the two screws, which is going from uh, from uh, from just below the GT. So I take the patient on the uh, table and uh, with a small lateral incision assisted reduction. I try to achieve as many as reduction as possible to the close anatomical reduction. After getting a um, uh, acceptable anatomical reduction, I put two wires, uh, two wires, one in anterior, one in posterior direction, and to achieve the reduction. And I plus, uh, place the uh, CC screw and in lateral and AP, we can say I can uh, able to achieve some excellent reduction. And, uh, and maintaining the S shape in a lateral view. But to address the vertical shear fracture, I have to put one CC screw that is going to transfer to the fracture line. Uh, so after that, I put a one transfer uh, fracture line, but there is a small displacement of the fragment, which is though less than two, uh, two millimeter uh, displacement, but there is a no angular uh, deformity in a lateral view. So it is come onto the right lift criteria that is, it is the acceptable position that is less than two millimeter uh, displacement and angulation is less than 20, uh, 20 degree. So in a post-op protocol, uh, I immobilize this child in a slab, X-ray uh, at a time of suture removal and immobilization. I ask the parents for immobilization for a four weeks, after which I do a one serial X-ray and will take another uh, thought about how many more days I have to immobilize this child. I operated this child in a last one, uh, two days, and now this child is in, is in our post-op protocol management. Thank you, sir. So uh, can you go back to the reduction uh, slide, the post-op x-ray? Yeah. So um, see, whenever we see uh, a bit of step at the neck area, you know, that is a sign of a bit of rotation. Okay. Uh, and if you go back to your uh, reduction film, go back, go back, go back, the IITV image. Go back once more. Ah, पीछे जाइए अभी. जो reduction film दिखाया आपने. Go back still. Yeah. yeah. So here you can see uh, that this proximal segment. If you could have given little traction, little more, okay, sir. and derotated the uh, fragment. This would have given a bit of bulkus and the calcar should align. You know? Although this red lift criteria says two millimeter displacement is acceptable in 20 degrees. That's right. But uh, we should aim at 100% anatomic reduction. Okay. So, uh, because, uh, you know, this sort of reduction, sometimes we fail. That is first comment. And the second comment is why you have used 4 mm cc, uh, the, the other screw, and why not 6.5? That's another question. So, and the calcars, I can I understand that one which you put from GT, uh, you would need a narrower diameter. No, actually, sir, the, the, hmm. the, uh, the, the screw I placed from the GT is a narrow diameter, it's 4 mm. Uh, yeah, I that's right, the, but the second one, you know, the just below the GT, and, 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 it, and you know that the fracture line is oblique, so why you have not placed till the subchondral bone, that is another question. Uh, so actually, you understand I just, what I mean, yes, uh, right, right, because right. then there will be little and only few threads beyond the fracture site. 
So did, didn't you have size of screw? Because probably if as you have used 4 mm, you will be limited by size probably. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. So That's you should right. have used 6, point, uh, 6 mm screw. Yes. Because, probably because you want to put a screw through GT, uh, you wanted to have a smaller diameter so that you can uh, put your GT screw. So that's... Uh, the thing but you can always put an uh, one screw in ap and uh, um, anterior and the other screw posterior yes. anyways vidya what is your comment on this yeah i think this is a older kit sir you are right probably uh, the top screw should have been a longer screw going all the way to the subchondral area uh, yes, the other thing is this fracture pattern is really nasty and uh, definitely we expect complications with that if you are not careful we could have avoided that uh, step uh, probably with the correction of rotation. One way is uh, if you can get enough abduction also, sometimes you can avoid that uh, rotation. Abduction on the traction table itself sometimes uh, gets the alignment properly. And uh, once this, uh, that's, that's the idea. The whole idea is to put uh, our fixation of temporary K-wires first and then start compressing. What I generally do is once I put all the K-wires wherever I want the screws or uh, to be placed, then I start to decide where I'm going to compress first. And then I don't compress actually, I keep the screw there ready. And then when I place the other screws, then I start compressing each screw in a serial manner so that I am not compressing and getting a distraction in one side and only compression in the other side. And here probably this 6.5 uh, screw would be better and could have gone longer. And the other screw also the same. They go to the next slide. Uh, because the other screw you have used just to avoid the virus, which has already happened there, the displacement. Uh, there is also sometimes merit in using a fully threaded screw if you are just using it uh, to be oriented vertically. That means perpendicular to the fracture set rather than your routine cancellous threaded things. Okay. So, so okay. Vidya Saga, uh, what is the uh, your indication of using a pediatric DHS along with CC screw? At what age you consider DHS and not the screws? Uh, I would not say age, sir. I would say the fracture pattern. Mostly mm -hmm. if they fall into type 3 and type 4, I'm more inclined to use this uh, plate devices, plate construction devices. And, okay. Uh, for this uh, and, fracture pattern, you would still go with CC screws? Probably there is an option here. Uh, there is a role of uh, locking the plate also because it would mm. not allow any collapse or any movement. Mm. But uh, I think the again, the wire placement and pre-reduction is important before you go on with the plate construct devices, any device for that matter. And Chinmay, uh, these patients, you know, adults, they all are nasty, see. I have seen failures. Uh, I mean, I, I have seen adolescents not fall. Because they are, once they are pain-free, they would like to move out of bed. And we know that this is a very uh, unstable situation. So, above knee slab is of no use. Child can do abduction, adduction, flexion. So, either you should go with a... Even going for a unilateral spica for six okay. weeks okay. Uh, uh, is good. Or you give a hip spike, a brace, but anything which the child can remove uh, can create problem. Now, we know that uh, Charles Price's paper, and they have used a unilateral spike even in a 13 years old. In their series, they have, there's a, the series which shows the list amount of AVN, and they attribute it to a rigid immobilization in the form of AVN for uh, at least four weeks, because I have seen mischiefs from... Uh, <laughs> Children of all the ages, you know. They happen in one one of my cases. Sir. They start walking on it. Uh, and anyone like it's, it's even we we see that thing in Skeffy. Yes, Whatever you instruct, unstable Skeffy, we say you do three months no movement, but still it's difficult for parents to restrict them, and they end up into complications. And so your one... your uh, your debate or your argument on what we commented. So, uh, one uh, more sir, I would like to uh, ask Chinmay, sir, how it is possible to get a compression after putting those screws in a different direction? So, what I feel is like after putting those wire, 
better put that compressing screw to get that compression and then put the whole construct yeah so the the i think the gt screw is to prevent varus uh, collapse it's not to sort of compress the fracture site uh that's that's probably the yes sir. the purpose of that screw but compression as deepak rightly said the compression should be uh, uh, done prior and as vidya sagar said that depending on whether the fracture is collapsing into varus or valgus you have to fix that screw first if it is going into valgus you put a calcar screw tightening first most of them we have fear of varus so we we fix the top screw or tighten the top screw first so to prevent it from going into varus so deepak your, your question is valid but the purpose i think is different uh, yeah the two points uh... Uh, i would like to mention one is the immobilization chin my i think it should be at least for i would not allow the child uh, non, uh, anything uh, less than 6 weeks especially with this nasty fracture okay. and then other thing is now i don't know i have not done it in children but there are some people who are advocating actually medial inferior plate just to avoid that step yes sir i also read about that paper also sir but what i think when i open it a little bit laterally and i want to Liver it out. There is a combination uh, in a calcar regions. So whenever I try to put and liver it out, it go telescopic inside the distal fragments. Yeah. What so happened? Everything can't be controlled. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so that's what I'm trying to control over there with the uh, whatever. Right. And Molin sir mentioned one thing that uh, regarding that uh, criteria for acceptability. Yes, sir. Now what I argue is that five mm uh, displacement. Uh, probably will be greater in a smaller child when the fracture fractures are higher and that 20 yeah. degree angulation if the same angulation is higher they will they'll be to one or two it translates to something else rather than the lower fracture so don't take that I mean, yeah. okay. they have mentioned 2 mm so the 2 mm would change to 3.5 when you lower your iitv <laughs> yeah. and uh, the age as Uh, it does say that age would also matter now that paper is based on very few number of patients so i don't know whether we should uh, accept that of course it gives a uh, it classifies the quality of reduction but the the power of study if we see in that paper is very very low so and so we all should aim at 100% anatomic reduction whether you need joystick whether you need open right and younger the child you can accept uh, and i would pray uh, that this this fracture stays that way you know and yes, you don't end up into complications early in your practice chin mai yes best luck for that okay let let's move on the next case so uh, who is presenting oh, sir me ha ah, shinam please share your screen now we'll we'll go quickly because i think uh, we have we have 10 minutes left is it visible yes a yeah. 8 uh, year old uh, male child presented to us with complaint of limp while walking uh, his history was suggestive of neglected septic hip in earlier childhood on clinical examination he had short limb gait right side had 6 cm of shortening there was restriction of abduction and internal rotation and trendlenburg test was positive this is a uh, x rays we can see there was a pseudo arthrosis and uh, there is acetabulum is almost vertical and there was also a retroversion and trochanter is upriding so a uh, neck shape angle is also disturbed almost uh, about 80 degrees so um shinam if i can stop you here and vidya how would you deal with this situation i mean this is not an acute situation i i suggested but the patient came with a recent onset of pain after a fall so 
he might have already the varus uh, alignment and he might have fractured acutely how would you uh, deal with this sir i would like to first investigate and know why the uh, fracture is there what is the history this is a post septic sequelae or is yeah. it a dda so uh, no 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 that is this an uh, infection in early childhood and okay. this patient was sequelae. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sequelae. I, I feel that the neck area would be, uh, you know, uh, weak, and the patient might have fractured already and collapsed in varus. And then recently they had some other issues and pain, and so they uh, we treated their uh, one of the relatives, and so they came, and we found this X-ray. Does the child have active infection now? No, no, no. there is no active infection there is no discharge and the child has been infection free for pretty long time now okay so now here we are dealing with a situation where there is a probably a pathological fracture with a bad uh, acetabulum also index wise mm. it's not going yeah. to just stay there so there is subluxation as well as there is a pseudo arthrosis i would say yeah and i would like to confirm that again and uh, just see the orientation i'm still not able to orient myself where the fracture line is and where the physis yeah. is yeah i agree so uh, deepak yes, are you there is there any role of uh, yeah. uh, what dynamic, what would be your dynamic yeah, what is your... like x-ray interaction just to see the yes, pattern sir. of the fracture and then decide or any yeah. can role you, of shinam can you show the next next film we we agree we did the same so this was this is what we got when we adducted we could see there is pseudo arthrosis shortening of neck and so vidya or deepak are you happy with this or you would like to do some further imaging we the patient was poor they, they didn't have much money to uh, you in know my, getting any uh, further in my my views of further investigation will not change our uh, further treatment plan plan of management so mm -hmm. there is no enough. further if it is like it, if it is possible then better get an mri but if it's not possible then i generally don't get uh, mri in neglected all my neglected neck i don't get mri because my plan never changes right so vidya would you are you happy with the x ray or you yeah, like yeah, to do yeah i think this should be fine probably i'll not put the child with another investigation except to rule out active infection or something yeah. uh, so, so what i also what been, i also saw that you know when we yeah i took the child in theater under image intensifier and saw with very fine movement there was not much movement at the sort of uh, pseudo arthrosis site so it is probably a long standing problem and there is fibrous uh, should arthrosis yeah so uh, you think the level of the dysplasia also no so it been must be a long standing thing from yes 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 this must be from early infancy or early childhood so what will be the plan uh, first vidya sagar and then uh, uh, deepak or anyone else if yeah. they have their eye so the plan is same get a correction by doing a valgus uh, osteotomy, osteotomy yeah. and stabilize yes i would do it right below the pseudo arthrosis probably a little bit lower than that and mm -hmm. get enough for valgus and the mm -hmm. same time because here there is a valgus and there is a concern of uh, dislocation or subluxation also because of the dysplasia i would also do one stabular procedure dega dega Yeah. Yes, and I would what? tell the patient that impingement is a possibility now, and may so, need something else to deal with that. And what sort of implant you would like to use in this patients? Uh, constrained patient, but what would be the ideal implant choice? I don't have an answer, but probably I would use a simple uh, uh, K wire with tension band here. and put a spike up post op okay so i think this child like is to add an arthrogram along with to see whether okay. it is all is ossified on the mm -hmm. acetabular part mm -hmm. because most of the time we try to overdo it and it 
and uh, deepak what do you think would you use any uh, fibula or we should do very well with simple valgasization okay so i i wanted to do everything you know in one go i, I was pretty sure this child would never come back for in second surgery so shinam would show what uh, we plan to yeah shinam go ahead uh, we uh, did when we did the templating uh, neck shaft angle was around 80 degree and the normal side was having a neck shaft angle of 135 degree when we planned uh, we our goal was to achieve neck shaft angle of around 135 degree as that of normal side uh these days a uh, a few days back a same kind of patient presented to us and we did 3d printing of uh, in that so, case we yeah so now what what we wanted to show that now the scenario has changed so now we have this facilities of doing 3d printing having bone models on our uh, hand we have locking plates so we do surgery on bone models first and then on to the patient nowadays but the scenario before 10 years was different so can you go back to the slide uh, the previous slide okay so here like i templated that if i use a recon plate then i should go till the top of the gt and there from there i should put one screw and there will be couple of screws through the uh, just below the gt and then i'll do a subtrochanteric osteotomy and i would require 45 degrees of lateral angulation and valgization so we try to replicate that uh, on table I think sir lost uh, his network. Okay, so can you can move for... forward at all. Yeah, can you show us the post-op X-rays? Yes, yes, sir. 